Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? I'm so happy to see you again. Welcome back to Senior Elementary Art Class. Our lesson today is called Grading Light and Shadow. For today's lesson, you will need printer or drawing paper, colored pencils, a graphite pencil, an eraser, and a ruler. Our lesson today is about shading. Using different values to create the illusion of light is called shading. As we learned in our previous lesson about edges, shading has a guiding rule what I call the first rule of shading. The farther from the light source it is, the darker it looks. Since most surfaces are not flat, artists will most often create a controlled gradient to produce an illusion that correctly portrays how much light lands on the surface they are shading. Since these surfaces do not share identical curves, how quickly the gradient changes from dark to light, also how light and how dark it gets, will vary from surface to surface. Our practice today is called Dark Light Dark. Place your ruler near the top of the page. Draw a line along the top and bottom of the ruler. This is your gradient space. Now move the ruler lower and draw at least three more gradient spaces, leaving a small space between each one. Now start shading a very dark gradient on the left edge of the page in the top gradient space. Make the gradient gradually get lighter as you make your way to the middle. In the middle, Get your gradient near white. And once past the middle, start darkening your gradient until you get to the right side of the page. Try to finish with the same dark shade you started with. Now I found that I did not quite go as dark as I should have with this gradient. So I actually went back and darkened my gradient, went back over to make it even darker so that the transition is even more obvious. Try to make sure that your transition is very smooth, that we can't see any lines in between the different shades. Now here I use my eraser to kind of do the same thing as I did with my pencil, except in reverse. So the more, uh, the harder you push on the eraser, the more graphite you remove, therefore the wider it will become. The less hard you push on the eraser, the le less graphite you'll remove and keep a darker shade. Now, do the same in the second gradient space, but shorten the ends of it. You can see I took out about three or four centimeters from the edge. Try to start and end with the same shades as before, and try to match the lightest shade in the middle. Now get gradually shorter with each of the next gradient spaces, but stay as dark and light as before. The shorter the gradient space you have, the faster the change in the shades will happen. Now, the more you do this exercise, the more comfortable you will become with shading. It takes a lot of time before you can really control um, how dark your uh, pencil needs to be. So keep on practicing. This piece is called Flower Still Life, a painting by Rachel Ruich, made with oil paints on canvas. Can you find a gradient on a smooth surface?
This white flower was painted with using only one gradient to create the illusion of light. Can you find a gradient that creates a more complex surface? These leaves have a more, much more complex, bumpy surface, so the artist would have had to use many small gradients with a lot of variety in the values to properly portray the illusion of light. Are there elements that are only shaded with darker values? The baskets and these flowers and leaves are only shaded using darker values. Why were they shaded like that? The light source is blocked from these elements. This caused a cast shadow and keeps them in dark values. This piece is called Flower Still Life with Butterflies, another painting by Rachel Ruich, made with oil paint on canvas back in 1800. Can you find a gradient that turns away from the light? This rose has a surface like a sphere, where one side is in complete light and the gradient gets darker as it turns away from the light source. Can you find darker values used to create areas that are hidden from the light? These leaves and flowers were hidden from the light on purpose to make sure that the other flowers stand out. Our project today is called Flower Shading. With your graphite pencil, lightly draw a small, wide oval in the center of the page. This will be the center of your flower. Now lightly draw a larger circle around the oval. This is to create the edge of the petals. Make sure there is less space between the edges of the oval and circle on the right. Draw petals from the edge of the oval to the edge of the circle. Now carefully watch how I draw them on the video. Their shape changes as we go around. On the left, they're much longer and the actual size of the shape doesn't change much. It grows a bit, but not very much. Now, as I make my way around the top and bottom, the shape is changing. It is growing quite a bit more as it's coming uh, towards us. That's actually the illusion we're trying to create. So the petal is getting bigger because it's getting closer to us. It's coming up from the center. On the right is where you're going to see the most extreme change. It's going to go from very uh, from skinny to very, very thick, very quickly. Now I'm going to add some small petals in between that are being overlapped by these ones, just to make the flower a little more interesting. Alright, our light source will be coming from the top left. I want you to shade the flower in a dark value. It's in a crevice inside the flower, so there's a lot of shadow falling on it, making it very dark. Now, starting with the petals on the left side, I want you to create a gradient that slowly gets lighter. Make the shade near white at the tips of the petals. You can see I'm using my eraser here too, just to make sure that the gradient is exactly the way I want it. I'm adding some darker shades in between the petals where I think we might be able to see it. That's actually going to be the other petals in shadow. Now I keep going back just to make sure that my gradient near the center is as dark as I want it to be.
it's always good to start out with a lighter gradient so you can darken it afterwards. If you darken too quickly, it can be very difficult to go back to light. Now, I'm shading the petals that are being overlapped much darker because they are in shadow. Now, as you make your way to the top and bottom petals, I want you to gradually give the gradient larger light areas. Make sure you still start them at the same dark value. The tips of the petals are actually closer to us and therefore closer to the light source. That's why they are lighter. As you can see, I can keep going back to make sure the gradient is exactly what I want it to be. When you're an artist, you always have to criticize what you're doing to make sure you do the best you can. When you get to the right side petals, you'll see that the transition is going to happen really, really fast from dark to light. So just like we practiced before, you want this transition, transition to happen quickly. You can really start seeing now that the darkness I'm using now for where my gradients begin in the center is actually quite a bit darker than the shade I chose for the center of the flower. That way we can still make out the shape of the center. You don't want it to disappear completely. Now that I've gone all the way around, I'm just checking up on a few details, really looking at my flower and seeing where I think it would look better if, if there was a bit more shading or if other things were happening. Here, I actually noticed that this petal's quite a bit out from underneath the other petal, so I decided to create a new shape for a cast shadow on it. So that means that the, the light source can actually reach that petal underneath just a little bit. I'm also lightening the petals that are more on, uh, nearer the uh, light source as well. I'm adding a bit of a texture here on the center to make it look more like the actual center of a flower. Once you're happy with this, uh, the shading of your flower, go ahead and pick your colors. All you need to do now is very carefully color in your flower with whatever colors you'd like. The shading, if you are careful with your colors, the shading should survive. You shouldn't be smudging your graphite. So just color carefully, one section at a time.
Now, even though I'm always using the same color, you can see how light and dark it actually becomes just because of my graphite shading. Yours will do the same thing. When you're finished, sign your work. Thank you, my friends, for joining Senior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I hope you had fun. Remember to take care of yourselves and your family, and I will see you next week. Au revoir.